In this episode, we'll walk you through how to wire and set up the trigger buffer button so it can automatically feed or retract material for you. Once everything's wired and set up, just pop the filament into the buffer end. It'll automatically start feeding it in for you. So basically, as soon as the buffer detects a low level signal, it'll keep feeding or retracting material continuously until the signal changes. All right, next up, I'll show you the config they've got in the docs and how you can tweak it to get this auto feed thing working on your end. First, we'll quickly go over the wiring last episode covered how to use it manually, but today we're leveling up. I'll show you how to automate filament feeding and retracting. Get a two pin signal wire ready. Cut it to the right length, just long enough for your setup. You'll need two types of connectors for this, XH2.54 and PH2.0. Make sure you've got the right ones. Now just plug the connectors in and make sure to double check the diagram on the left so you're inserting them into the right spots. All right, start with the blue one, that's your PB5 pin. Next, take the green wire and connect it to pin PB6. Connect the booth wire on the buffer controller board. And that's it, the wiring on the buffer side is all done. Let's move on to the main board side. On the back of your main board, you'll see silkscreen labels showing the pin names. Usually, you'll want to plug into one of the spare end stop ports. And just like before, simply plug the connector into the matching end stop port on the main board. Just gently route those two wires out through the gap around the motor. It keeps everything neat and out of the way. Last step, plug in any power supply from 12 to 24 volts. Open a web browser on your computer and navigate to the Mellow official website. A multilingual selector is available in the top right corner. Find modules, an expansion board, buffer, wiring, and configuration. Last episode, when we went over the basics, we just tapped that middle button, feeding or retraction. Use this function, we need to be updated to firmware version 1.1. Buffer operates by detecting the logic level high or low on a designated input pin. A state change triggers an automatic filament feeding sequence, enabling uninterrupted material supply the fundamental principle of its operation. Next is wiring guide. Let's grab a reference config. And you'll need to set up the basic sensor functionality first, then you can add the advanced config below. You'll see two config options, here one for the toolboard and one for the main board. Since we're connecting the buffer directly to the main controller, the MCU board, just go with the main board version. Now, go back and pull up the C8 Pro main board pinout diagram. You'll need to check exactly which pin you used and enter that in your config. This is the pinout diagram we need. Important. The following configuration is an extension and requires the first episode with correct pin assignment. Without the base function config, this buffer will not work. Copy this example configuration. We need to refer to the C8 mainboard pinout diagram and make changes.
Here I've selected two end stop pins. One is PD8 and the other is PA4. Now that the config is set up, we need to tweak how long the buffer feeds when triggered. Let's adjust the feed duration. Adjust the feed amount to match the length of your filament tube. If your filament tube is long, increase this value. Conversely, if it's short, reduce it. There may also be a need to adjust the GCO macro to suit your printer. Every printer is different, and we can't guarantee that the reference material will work for all printers. So please adjust the reference configuration to suit your printer or to implement your own ideas. Now test whether it can trigger properly. Automatic filament retract can trigger the R buffer underscore material underscore return macro command. Once retract testing works properly, this is end of the video. Thanks for watching.